Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Right, I've had to hang back a little bit today. I should have been out, I've, well, I've been on the boat for about an hour now, and I'm waiting for this fog to lift. As you can see, it is, you can just to see, see the shoreline there, but this is the reason why you need to be careful on a day like today. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a monstrous great tanker just over there and you can't even see it. So visibility today is around about 100 meters, maybe less. So yeah, just got to have your wits about you on a day like today. There's no point steaming off in darkness when it's foggy because you're just, you're just increasing the risk. Days like today, you need to mitigate it. The plan is today, hopefully, is it's a two fuel tank type of day. <laughs> I'm going to be going a long way. Uh, I've had my eye on a couple of wrecks right offshore for quite a while. And I've been waiting for the right conditions. Hopefully today is going to be the day. Uh, I'm, depending on what it's like when I get there, I'll either fish with some lures or I'll anchor up straight away. Either way, I'll, I'll make that decision when I get there, but I'll talk you through it as I'm doing it. Uh, the idea is I'm hoping to try and find a little bit of bait on the way. So some pilchard, some mackerel, that type of thing. Yeah. So wish me luck. When I got this new boat, I knew that I was going to be pushing further offshore doing overnighters, things like that. So I decided to get AIS, which is a safety feature that I can use when I'm at anchor or on a night. Because like now, that tanker that's over there that you can't see, by using my AIS system here, you can see it there. Look. See what I mean? So yeah. Perfect for on a night or when it's foggy. Now, certain vessels of a certain size, they have AIS. Smaller boats, you don't. So it'll only help you with the really big ones. But every little helps. This is what we're looking for. Just like that. See if I can't get a couple of three more. This is one of those things that I guess non-anglers might not understand, but it really doesn't get any better than this. You've got the sun just coming up there and you've got fish below the boat. There's no better way to start the day. That's some cracking mackerel in there as well. Yeah, so that's a brilliant start. See if we can't get offshore. No matter how many times I see them, I still love it. Well, we're a long way off now. <laughs> right, I am a long, long, long way offshore. And uh, I've not yet got to the wreck that I want to go and try. I passed one of them and it had fishing gear on. Just on my way to plan B, I found this other little wreck. And I thought what I'd do is I would have a drop down just to have a try as I'm coming past. Now, a friend of mine makes his own jigs. And I said I would trial these out for him. So what I'm going to be fishing is, I'm just going to fish a light jig. I say light, this is probably about six ounces. And I'm just going to fish it on a fixed pearl setup. Now this wreck, this wreck isn't a very big one. This one's maybe only about 30 meters long. So you've got to be quite precise with your drifts. I'm hoping for things like Ling and Pollock. Pollock mainly on these little jigs, and when I get anchored up and I get some baits down, we might get some link. One of my targets, one of my targets for this boat and this year, is I want a PB conga. I want a conga over 70 pounds. Generally, the best place to find those is on the big wrecks. So that's going to be my plan. I'm going to spend a bit of time fishing the big wrecks this year.
We have a little bit of a confused swell, I don't know if you can see, it's coming from two different directions. That's because you've got residual swell left over from some bad weather and you've got wind in a different direction, so you get two different converging swells. We are in 102 metres of water at the moment. By feathering the line down, rather than just letting it run off, if a fish picks you up on the way down, you generally know about it. We have still got a little bit of tide left. That's why I said I was going to fish with lures first and then put the anchor down because when the tide's going in one direction, if you anchor up and the tide changes, it just swings you around on the other direction. That's quite interesting there. See if I can't grab that, that's a little fish. And if I can get it, if it is, if it is what I think it is, it's a boar fish. <laughs> As if I just caught it. as well. I've got the boar fish in this tub here, I'll show you it in a second. But I'm sat right over the wreck now. <laughs> I can't believe I caught that boar fish. They're a proper deep water fish. This has probably been caught as a discard in a trawler. Right. That is your boar fish. <laughs> I'll put the proper Latin name in there for these, but these are a proper deep water fish. Like I said, I just saw it going past in a piece of, a piece of weed. Scooped it up in a bucket. <laughs> so yeah, boar fish. I'm going to swing back round and I'm going to try that again because we, we just skated off the side of the wreck. If we get nothing on this drift as well, we'll move on. It's a nice looking wreck. Just didn't seem to be anything on it today. Not even a pouting. Another one. <laughs> That's crazy that. Ah well, of course that bigger wreck now. First drift on the bigger wreck. Mainly just to see which way the boat's gonna move. I need to know which way the wind and the tide's going and I know which way I need to know which way the boat's gonna lay. Yeah, that is a fish. <laughs> it is a fish, but I think it's only a little one. I think it's probably going to be a pouting. It's a long way to bring up a pouting. Pouting live down and amongst the wrecks. That's what lots of these fish feed on. Conger and ling and everything else like that, they'll feed on the pouting. So, chances are, if this is a pouting, which I think it is, all I'll do is, when I put the anchor down, I'll send this back down as bait. <laughs> Big old fat pouting. Oh, that was a bite. Yep. Might have another pouting.
It's a shame that because that was a really good bite to start with. There was maybe two fish chasing at at the same time. But a good head of pouting on a wreck is a good thing. Because if there's no small fish, there won't be any big fish. Because if there's no small fish, there's nothing for the big fish to eat. So if there's plenty of little fish down there, we've seen some good sized baits down, we should be able to pull out some decent fish. Go on, down you go. That pouting's just shook the hook just under the surface but as it did it spat out a load of air so hopefully it'll go back down yeah picked up another pouting that is actually that's a poor cod that is the biggest poor cod i've ever seen i'm gonna get a weight on that because <laughs> I tell you what, you might be looking at a British record poor cod there. That's absolutely massive for a poor cod. Poor cod usually when you catch them they're that big. That's an absolute donkey of a poor cod. <laughs> Just goes to show you never can tell, can you? That's massive. Now anchoring up in this depth of water isn't easy, especially trying to do it with any precision. Like I say, I am... Um, depth of water are you now? Ninety-two metres of water. And I'm trying to anchor up so that with the, <laughs> with the drift, with the tide and with the wind, I end up laying back onto the wreck. It's not an easy thing to do, and you don't always get it right first time. <laughs> I keep my anchor rope in coils. I have two lengths. I'm having to use both coils today, <laughs> so yeah, it's deep water. Right, so I've got all my rope run out now. I've got all my rope run out, and I've tied it off to the forward cleat. And then all I'll do is maybe 20 feet from the front of the boat put on this. It stops the anchor boy from slipping all the way to the boat. All you do is you just just a piece of 2x4 that I've, I've drilled a, a decent sized hole in. Just need to loop it round like that. So that sits on the rope like that. So the anchor boy doesn't slide all the way to the rope all the way to the bow of the boat. You can see the anchor boy up the front. This is where I put my anchor down and you can see it sat me right on the corner of the wreck. Now the wind's blowing this way. It is going to change slightly to blow that way. So I position myself on this corner of the wreck so when the wind changes and I move I'll still be fishing on the wreck. Now that we're sat back at anchor and I know where we are in the wreck to start off with, I'm going to be using my fish locker wrecking rigs. I'm using my wrecking leaders, wrecking rigs, and I'm going to be putting some conga rigs on in a minute. The reason why I'm using wrecking rigs right now is, while we still might move around a little bit, these are better for bouncing. Conga rigs, they sit right tight on the bottom. So I'm not going to put them out until I know that we're absolutely stationary on the wreck. Get these on, get some of that fresh mackerel on those bait. There you go. All I've done is I've filleted one of the mackerel off. But fill it on one side and the head and the guts on the other. And apart from just covering the side of my boat in loads of blood, yeah, I'm just going to drop it down back onto the wreck. Now the wreck is down like that. We are just up tide of it. So as my baits drop in, they should drop up up to the wreck. As the tide stops, as the tide slackens off a little bit, I might let a little bit more rope out so that we can sit bang on top of it. Yeah, fishing in really deep water like this it takes, takes ages to get to the seabed and then when you hook something it takes ages to get it back up but there really is just the chance of anything i mean it's, it's only really the commercial boys that come out this far you don't you don't generally get <laughs> you don't generally get pleasure anglers as, as daft as i am 
But yeah, out in these wrecks like this, this really is where it could be anything. Could be a conga rail down there of £100. A big part of this is being able to envisage in your mind what's happening on the seabed. Because although using braid, you do get really good bite detection, you do know what's going on. You're waiting for like a committal bite, like a proper bite. I've had a lot of pouting biting. It's not a bad thing really. Not only is it creating disturbance down there on the seabed, so bigger fish will take notice. But also by chewing the baits up a bit, it creates a scent trail. And a decent sized scent trail will, build, will bring the bigger fish out. <laughs> should never trust the weather man. Stronger and in a different direction than forecast. But we're out here now, so we'll stick it out. That's a fish. Oh. Now it's crucial when you're fishing into a wreck like this. First 20 feet are crucial because you need to get it up out of the snags. Once you've got it up away from the wreck, you can afford to take a little bit more time with it. That is a lovely link. Brilliant. That is a perfect sized eating link. I'll get this guy dispatched and bled off. This really is a perfect sized table link. When they get really, really big, generally I find I've got quite a lot of worms inside of them. One of the things you need to be careful of is, I don't know if you can see inside of its mouth, there are lots and lots of teeth. But also, inside the gills here, when you slide your hands in there, they're called gill rakers and they're incredibly sharp. It's torn my fingers up there. But yeah, that's something to be careful of. He's gone now, he's, I've, I've dispatched and I'm blading him off. So yeah, he's past people. Doesn't stop him tearing you up. It's not ideal conditions when you're slopping around like I am now. So what you're trying to do is I'm anchored just up tight of the wreck. So I'm dropping my bait and my weight down so that by the time they hit the seabed, I can gently just trot them back towards the wreck. I don't really want to be right inside the wreck right now because there's a bit of tide running. And usually what will happen there is the tide will push my gear into the wreck and I'll snag it up. What I'm wanting is I'm wanting the fish to come out of the wreck because my bait is up tied of the wreck, the fish can smell it, they should come out of the wreck to take the bait. It's a fine line on knowing how far to trot the bait back. There's a bite. You can usually feel, you can feel whereabouts the lead is by what's happening with the seabed. Unless the wreck is on hard ground. Oh, that's a good point. Usually it's soft, so the lead will thud, thud, thud. And as soon as your lead starts banging hard, you know the lead's hit the wreck. I don't know if you can see these bites. But it's just, just pouting at the minute. Just like rattling ones like that, it's just pouting. When you get a ling you'll know because it's a proper aggressive bite. Yeah. If you're getting loads and loads of bites and then it stops, generally that means that you've got no bait left. Which is I think what might have happened here. Right. 
It's at zero. It's made me laugh this. This is by far the biggest poor cord I've ever caught in my life. Right. That's three times on 0 0.220 kilograms. So it's 220 grams. The British record is 350 grams. That must have been a monster poor cord. This is the biggest one that I've ever seen. Look at this. Yeah, I got all excited for now. 220 grams. I'll have to look and see what the specimen weight is when I get back. Ooh, tell you what, that's just let go. That fish must have come up and grilled the bait in its mouth and was shaking it like that. And as soon as I've lifted into it, it's just gone. Wind has changed direction a little bit and I'll show you, I'll put a piece in now to show you why I anchored how I did at the start. We are rolling about a bit but I hope I can show you there. When I started off I was at this corner of the wreck. Of course I knew that the wind was going to change round. We've now ended up in the middle of the wreck. So by planning ahead because I knew what the wind was going to do, I'm still fishing onto the wreck. Just sent down a high rig. What I usually do there is I'll I'll suspend a couple of macro strips about 20 feet above the wreck. See if there's any errant pollock screwing around fancying a little bit of a snap. Ah! <laughs> I think what I've got is I've either got a couple of little ling or little congas coming in and ragging the baits. They're not big enough to get a bait in the mouth, but big enough to give a decent bite. Well, my high rig has managed to find an absolute donkey of a pouting. <laughs> long steam back. I'm going to give it another half an hour here to see if it can calm itself down. If it doesn't calm down anything, we'll just start jogging back. It's a fish there as well though. Piece of the wreck. There was a fish there and it managed to get hold of a piece of the wreck and bind itself up long enough to be able to turn its head and turn the hook out. So you got to be right on them. There's too much going on here really. You're banging around too much. You can't stay in proper contact with the bottom so you can't tell when you're getting a bite because the boat's bounding up and down. If you got like a really shy biting fish, you wouldn't be able to register that you would have had a bite because the boat is uh, all over the place. Got you that time. Oh no! Pinged off twice now. That's a really big conger eel. I can tell because it's hiding in a piece of the wreck. It's maybe got its tail in a hole and its head's just popping out far enough to get rid of the bait. 
That's a big fish, that. That is a big fish. I'm in a dilemma now. Wind in, put a fresh bait on, and it might go somewhere else. Leave it down, hoping it's going to come back, and I might have no bait on. That fish has taken all the other rod, bound it up in the bottom. When I wound in my other rig, all the bait was gone, the top muppet was gone, and all the lines chafed up. So yeah, it's had it in its mouth, and as it's bound itself up in the wreck, I managed to turn the hook out. So as I wound this one in, I got a bite on that other rod, and I didn't have time to pick it up. So yeah, the fish has picked that rig up, and again, it's taken itself into a snag. Now it's, it's just got too rough. I can't, I can't see the bites quick enough to be able to get on top of them. And if you're not on them within seconds, they get into a hole like what they have done here. Just too much motion. Too much motion in the ocean. <laughs> Some days they just don't make it easy. This is one of them days. Some days it's just not easy. It's like a different day in shore, isn't it? I've got myself right tight in shore and I'm tucked in just on the lee side of this headland there out the wind. It did get quite rough out there today. I mean, unfortunately, the forecast, I might as well not bother looking at it. It was supposed to be like six mile an hour winds. By the time we left, it was more like 26 mile an hour winds. It's just how it goes sometimes. I'm really glad I managed to get out to those two wrecks. It's not often that I go that far offshore. Now, the first wreck that I wanted to go and check out, it had fishing gear on it, but I did get a chance to have a look at it on the sounder. The second one, I got the anchor down and I did manage to get that lovely ling out. I'm gonna fill it that off in a minute. Now, <laughs> classic one that got away story. I did latch into a really good fish right at the end. I had him on the hook. Well, I had hold of him twice. First time I managed to bind himself up in the wreck and then let go. And the second time just spat the hook. But that's, uh, yeah. Conditions were really bad by the end. So I, I did what I could. I know where he lives though. So I'll be back. Don't you worry. I hope you enjoyed joining me. I hope you found this video interesting. All the very best. See you later.